Okay, welcome back. Right, flying shark. Do 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 do. Flying shark. Do do. No, I'll stop that um, because you will um, throw your phone off the top deck of the bus or something that you're on when you're watching this. Yeah, flying shark released um, for the uh, Spectrum Amstrad Commodore 64 1987 by Firebird conversion of the Taito um, coin op. It's one of my favourite um, games on the Spectrum. But again, I'm no good at it, and I believe I consider it to be one of the best um, arcade con versions on the system. This is the original copy that I bought in 1987, still with me today. I bought it from Jones Brothers in Holloway Road in London, um, which was a big department store that sadly isn't there anymore. Um, yeah, I had to use this for the Spectrum version, so you're getting a double authentic for that um, because the MP3 file, believe it or not, wouldn't work um, for some strange reason, but the tape loaded straight off. So, um, again, it's just to test the sort of similarities and differences between um, the three versions. I'm not familiar with the Amstrad version or the Commodore 64 version. And I'd like you all to sort of jump in and say uh, what your memories and recollections are. Now, there are two versions of the Commodore 64 version. One that, was, uh, that, that we are familiar with here in the UK, and I believe there's one called Sky Shark, which was released in the US. And I believe the differences between the two are supposed to be... Um, quite um, uh, noticeable. Um, in what way? I don't know. Now, the commentary is all over the place in the segments and stuff. I've recorded them at different times. So you will hear me say, uh, I'll try and download Sky Shark. Well, I did try and download it and unfortunately it won't work. So I can't bring you that. Um, but by all means, check it out on YouTube, see what you think. Or similarly, if you have any memories of or knowledge of Sky Shark, please let me know. Right, okay, I don't know what order I'm going to do this in, um, just be as it comes up. I suppose the best thing to do is start with where I'm familiar, um, which is with the Spectrum, and then the Amstrad and Commodore will just follow either way, which one. Anyway, there we go. Okie dokie, right, here we go. Flying Shark for the Spectrum now. I've redefined the keys. There is a redefinable keys option. Um, I am actually had to load this off the actual tape I bought in 1987 and it loaded first time because the uh, the file on the MP3, uh, for some reason it wouldn't, um, it didn't like it. Right, QA, OP and space, let's have a look at the specy version of Flying Shark. Do, 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 do. Uh, right, here we go. Now this is the version I'm most familiar with and I really, really enjoyed it back in the day. Um, oh, forgot to mute my phone, can't do it now. Um, plays really really nicely um, graphics are nice and crisp and clear um, the only difficulty there is is as you see there is the um, is the bullets which is uh, uh, you know they're a bit difficult to see in this yellow and black background now I do uh, although the Amstrad has got a bit more color in it um, I do prefer this although the Amstrad version is still a really really nice looking game um, so spectrum owners um, your thoughts and memories of this uh, game? Oh, I accidentally uh, uh, let off a smart bomb there. Um, didn't actually mean to do that then, but never mind. Um, yeah, thoughts and memories on of this game. I think this is one of the better, um, one of the best arcade conversions on the Spectrum. It has its unavoidable faults. Um, now we did see um, the year before um, Light Force from Faster Than Light with its uh, revolutionary uh, graphics uh, uh, shooting up that. Um, was extremely colourful on the spectrum, but I always found it played sort of quite slowly. Um, what do you think? Would that have worked on something like this? Um, let me know. Uh, what, what you sort of? Oh dear, Baz is dead. Right, let's try that again. Oh, I've got a great score. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, let's go back to the beginning. Um, now, how do you think this fares up against um, the? Uh, other uh, versions that I've shown you um, plays really really nicely like I've said um, and it is one that um, I got quite a bit of play of out of uh, back, in, back in the day never got very far in it um, this is me after all uh, but I did enjoy it um, right so now I've got the double bullets makes things, or supposed to make things slightly easier, but I'm still likely to cock something up. Now the smart bomb didn't um, do for that uh, bloke there. Um, I wonder why that would be. 
Oh, so yeah, it's, it's starting to get a little bit frantic. Um, but it's also um, really, really good fun. Uh, oh. Right, so now I'm back to uh, my farty little pea shooter of a of a gun. Oh dear! Oh dear! But yeah, I do uh, enjoy this game. Right, so now back to me two bullets. Get rid of that. Now, what hit about flying shark? It's um, th they all come from exactly the same location. So once you sort of like learn. <clears throat> the direction the attacks are going to come from, it's going to be the same type, same um, every time you play it. So um, it really is just a case of um, learning sort of attack patterns. Now, oh, <laughs> um, that's uh, great coming from me. Um, I've made it sound really easy there, but um, it is honestly the truth. Um, once you've sort of like learned the attack patterns, you should be able to do um, uh, uh, much better each time. But, um, you know, there are the, the sort of problems with the, um, the bullets uh, occasionally being quite hard to see. Um, but, you know, that was something that we got used to with Spectrum games back in the day. Um, you know. Right, so. But, yeah, really, really nice colourful, detailed graphics on this. Um, they really, you know, do the, the programmers uh, a good um, tribute, if you know what I mean, you know, to the skill that um, has gone into this. The fact that it's playable, now like I've said, I'm not sure if I've said it actually, because I'm not sure which way around these um, gameplay segments are going to go. Um, yeah, um, I've never played the um, arcade game uh, of uh, Flying Shark, so I, I, I don't know what that's like. Now, I believe there is a um, Commodore. There's two Commodore 64 versions, um, one of which I've already recorded the segment for, and one which is called Sky Shark, uh, which is an American release of the game. And I've located something that might be it, and if it's the right file, then I will include it. Um, as well, just see, so we can check the sort of similarities in uh, those versions as well. Now, yeah, this is starting to get really uh, sort of, well, for me, quite intense. Um, but it's starting to become really good fun now. I'm sort of into this zone, if you like, which I will cock up spectacularly. Now you see takes a while to actually, a few hits to actually take the turrets out um, because they're a bit, oh and I've accidentally um, loosed off my last smart bomb there. Hope I get another one pretty damn soon um, because I've got this big bugger coming up now. Oh dear, this is going to be, right, uh, death or glory, death or glory. Oh, well done Baz. See, now normally I'm really, really shit at games but I've well, I am shit at, at, uh, at... Ah! I was just about to say I'm re doing really well at this. Ah! Right, oh, now I've got to fight him. Oh, oh, I'm going to have to loose off my smart bombs. Get out of it, you fucker. Um, sorry about the language. But yeah, I'm really, really uh, enjoying this. Um, And I should be at the end of level one now. Right, okay. Thanks ever so much for that. That's the Spectrum version of uh, Flying Shark. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, um, to move on. Okay, here we are. Flying Shark for the Amstrad CPC from Firebird in uh, 1987 by um, uh, 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 John Cumming and Dom Robinson. Um, I really, really loved this on the Spectrum. I thought it was one of the bet better... Uh, arcade conversions. So let's see what the Amstrad version is like. So pressing space gets us into the game. Now straight off the bat, uh, graphically, apart from the, the colour differences of course, um, it, this looks to be sort of the same. Um, 
as the Spectrum version. Uh, it's no bad thing because the Spectrum version is a good looking game. Although that was yellow and black, this is kind of orange and black. Um, it gives more detail in the graphics. It's certainly um, better graphics than uh, 1942. Um, but then that's not particularly uh, difficult. Whoa! Now I can of course press a space for a smart bomb if uh, things get too hectic, which uh, for me is usually quite often. Ha! <laughs> When my fingers and thumbs don't do what um, I want them to. Right, come on. Now I'm finding that the bullets, which I'm really surprised about, I'm finding the enemy bullets um, quite difficult to keep a track of. Um, they're a kind of very pale yellow against this sort of orange, dusty background. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't have, you know, I can kind of expect and understand it with the um, Spectrum version, but not so much the Amstrad because, you know, it shouldn't have any sort of colour issues. I'm sure they could have made the enemy bullets a, a bit brighter. Um, it doesn't break it, but, you know, still all this. Oh, there's a smart bomb. Oh, I've already got um, as many bombs as I can handle or carry. Um, right, come on, next lot. Now, this is playing really, really nicely though, um, despite that sort of little criticism. Um, it's a little bit slow. I'm not sure if it's the same speed as the Spectrum version. Um, you'll have seen all three versions up against each other, so you let me know. Uh, ah, come on! Oh, right. Yeah, time for a smart bomb there. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all, this. Oh, see what well, I mean? I couldn't see that bullet that um, that done for me. Game over. Uh, a, a, a. Right, I'll have uh, one more go at that. It's not bad at all. First impressions are it's not bad at all. Um, but I think could have been better. Um, So Amstrad owners, what's your um, opinions of the game? Ah, come on! Whoa! I'm enjoying it though, despite its uh, little frustrations. Uh, now he's going to fly... Oh no he ain't. Yes he is. Uh. Ah! Deed! Come on, I want that bomb. Come on, come on. Yeah, there are certainly worse Am uh, games on the Amstrad. Um, this is good. Oh. Forced myself to use a smart bomb there. Because I panicked. Don't panic, Mr. Man in. Oh, there's an extra life. Oh, it's gone. Ah. Oh, uncharted territory. Can't remember this bit. Got ahead of myself there. Right, so I'll have that back. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. Worth a play. I um, think I prefer the Spectrum version to it, but not bad at all. Ah! 
Right, okay, there we go. That was uh, Flying Shark for the Amstrad CPC 464. Okay, on to the next one. Hello, welcome back. Right, as you can see, now on to the Commodore 64 version of Flying Shark. Now, I am playing this on a joystick. I'm absolutely hopeless at joysticks. Um, you've seen the Spectrum and Amstrad versions, so let's see what um, this is like. Now, I'm led to believe that there is a second version of this um, called Sky Shark that was released in the US only for the Commodore 64, I think. Um, but I can't find that anywhere, so uh, we're stuck with the uh, the Firebird edition. Now, there is also um, a way of playing this. It's been cracked with um, Infinite Lives, etc. Um, I'm hopeless at this, so I'll show you the game to start with, and then we'll go into it um, a little bit, and we'll try and see a little bit further with the use of some inverted commas, speech marks, whatever you want to call them, help. Right, okay. So let's go into it. Right, as you can see, um, we've got music sort of playing through it, which we didn't have in the other versions. Um, the graphics are less clear and sort of crisp than the other two versions, despite being more sort of colourful than um, either of them. Um, and one of the um, tr uh, problems I've had with it is, as you can tell with these sort of bits, it's a little bit uh, tricky to see what's going on. Um, when they're sort of uh, camouflage and bullets um, get um, hidden, um, etc. And it's also very, very easy to accidentally fire one of your smart bombs um, by um, if you happen to press forward on the joystick when you ah, um, ah, when you um, yeah press fire on the joystick uh, and up at the same time um, you can that's a way of also launching one of your smart bombs now um, you can also press space uh, oh for God's sake um, I'm finding it difficult to sort of see what's going on um, a lot despite it being sort of colourful I mean as you can see there the bullets are quite difficult to sort of make out which I wouldn't have expected um, from a Commodore 64 game but you know I've got to give it a try um, the music gets a little bit irritating actually if I'm um, uh, honest with you um, it's not bad um, and it certainly, uh, certainly is um, sort of faster, I think, um, than the other sort of two versions, but I, I, don't quote me on that, because I'm not a thousand percent sure that's actually correct, and if it is, it's not much faster, um, but you will have got this far and seen um, the other versions, so you let me know uh, whether or not that's true. Now, um, yeah, I mean, it, it sort of plays well enough, but, oh, for God's sake, but like I say, there are some problems with it, and... <laughs> It might well just be me. Um, it probably, oh, for God's sake, it probably just is me. Um, you know, so that's why I'm going to have a go. Oh, for God's sake. Right, that's going to be game over. Yeah, going to have a go now with it um, sort of in cheat mode, basically, if you like. Just so that I can go a little bit further into the game and show you a little bit more about the uh, Commodore 64 version. Back in a sec. Okay, welcome back. Here we are. I'm now in full cheating bastard mode. Right, let's have a look and see if I can get just a tiny bit further on this because I'm, I'm having um, problems with this, um, as I sort of said. Um, joystick and control issues, probably down to me rather than uh, the game's fault itself. Now I've got unlimited lives and smart bombs, etc. So I should be able to get a little bit further. Ah. Um... You see what I mean? If I'm sort of pushing forward and... Oh, for God's sake. Um, yeah, this is working out well, isn't it? Go for infinite lives and uh, be even worse than when you only have three. Um, yeah. It's um, surprisingly sort of less fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, but Commodore 64 owners, please shout out um, what your memories of this game are. Um, as well as anyone else, um, you know. You see the, the sort of bullets over the water are, are quite... Um, very, very difficult to see, actually. Um, or is it just me? You know, my eyesight's shit anyway, but... Ah, come on! Oh, dear. 
Um, competent enough, enough conversion, I suppose, but you know, I don't know Flying Shark at all. Um, arcade wise, it's not a, a game I ever saw the arcade version of. Um, And like I said, the Spectrum version was a game that I played a lot back in the day without sort of ever mastering it. Um, and I have done a standalone review of the Spectrum version as well. Um, something just went flying off up there, didn't it? I don't know what it was. What is it? Something I don't even need because I've got unlimited lives and bombs. Um, yeah. It's not... I don't think this is great. It's not bad, but it's not great. Um, too many sort of fiddly bits in it for me. And not being able to see those. Fuck off. Uh, bullets and stuff. It, you know, it's a real. And I know it's a problem in the other two versions that we've seen. Come here. You want that? Ah! It's a problem in the other two versions we've seen, but, um, oh, for God's sake. Right. Oh, just get the extra bullets and I can lose a life. This is brilliant, isn't it? This is what Infinite Lives is. It just shows you how sort of crap I am, really. Now, oh, come on. So I'm interested, you know, did you play it much back in the day? Um, ah, fuck off. Oh, this is this is really getting quite infuriating and frustrating now, but that's probably born uh, from me. Come here, right, got you now. Ah, oh, yet again. I'm going to give up. <laughs> I give up, even with infinite lives and stuff. Um, you can see I'm just woefully bad at um, this game. Um, fuck it, I'm just going to throw smart bombs everywhere. That might get me a little bit further at least. Right, got through that bit. Come on, come on, come on. But I don't actually need that because I've got about four million. But never mind, I'll take it anyway. No such thing as a free lunch. But free bombs, we'll take those. Right. Um, yeah, certainly not, not the worst Commodore 64 game I've played. And, oh, you see, I just can't see those bullets when they're... I'm sh Bollocks. Right, come on. The struggle, come on. Ah! Come on. Oh, take that, you big tank bastard. Right now, what's what's going on? Right, okay, there we go. That's clearly the end of the first level um, of Flying Shark on the Commodore 64. Right now to the outro. See you in a sec. Hello, welcome back. Right, it's gone a bit dark in here. Sorry about that. So there you are, three versions of Flying Shark for the ZX Spectrum. Amstrad and the Commodore 64. Now, what are my thoughts of them? Um, I we'll start with the Commodore 64 version. Although it was um, colourful, fast, um, I found it very, very difficult to see what was going on. Um, I didn't really um, enjoy the game that much. I won't say it was a bad game, um, but given the choice, um, I would rather play the Spectrum version. Um, the music was good. Yeah, the, the pace was good, but the graphics were. Um, 
sort of blocky, um, difficult to see what was going on, um, as I've already said. Moving on to the Amstrad, it was very colourful, um, very, very similar to the Spectrum version, looked really, really, really nice. I thought it played quite slowly though, but it wasn't a bad um, conversion at all, I don't think. Um, I presume as an Amstrad owner back in the day you'd have been happy enough with uh, that version of Flying Shark. But I think the Spectrum version, um, probably because I played it, it's the one I played the most, um, is uh, it is the best of the three in, in that one. The graphics are really, really, really nice despite only being sort of a yellow and black. And again, there are problems um, seeing the bullets and stuff at times, but I thought it played uh, a, 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 a very good pace to it. Um, worked really 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 well everything about it was um, really really well done um, the faults on it are, are just faults that you know are the system faults you can't really do that too, too much to get around those um, but you know all three of uh, you uh, Commodore owners, Amstrad owners, Spectrum owners what uh, are your memories of the version you had for your particular system and uh, what do you think of the others if you've never seen them and this is the first time you'll have seen them now I've said a few times um, during the course of this video uh, there's a US version of the Commodore 64 game called Sky Shark I could find a file with that name but it wouldn't open so I can't show you that unfortunately which um, is a shame because I remember reading in an episode of Retro Gamer in an episode of Retro Gamer in an edition of Retro Gamer quite a few years ago now about um, US and UK versions of games for the um, Commodore 64 um, and there were some quite stark differences between some of them and I can't remember any of the games off the top of my head now um, but yeah so please fill me in with some knowledge um, about that if it was uh, very very commonplace for there to be completely different versions for completely different markets right if you like the video please let me know if you wish to subscribe please do so but if you do subscribe as ever please please join in the discussions thank you ever so much have a great day